If you recall, last year I talked about the interconnection between ports and ships. That was Math for Ship 2019. I actually was paving the road for this presentation today. Uh, Mr. Dionisio, we just the other we just heard from you very rightly what all the shipping companies are striving from today to make their ships more efficient and more. Uh, interpreted into the reality of today. So everybody is trying to improving their ship efficiency. But while the shipping companies are striving to do that, do we really actually achieve full efficiency? Because the ship is not in isolation of the rest of the environment. We have the hinterland, we have the transport chain, and to do that we need to, to arrive or leave a port. And apparently, we do not have every day all ports operating in the efficiency we want, or they do not share the information we do want to have. On the other hand, with the ports, they don't have all the information required by the ship when it's arriving, when it's delayed, when it's not going to, to come at all. So we do have the ability to improve that, and how we can do that improving the efficiency during the port call. We are only operating now on improving the efficiency during the voyage, during the time we are in port. But what about the efficiency which is in collaboration with the port, the ship, and the actors within the port, and the actors within the ship operator, the ship manager, or the ship owner? What is known? What has access to this, who has access to this knowledge? Is it real time? or who has control of the situational awareness. What I'm trying to say here is, wh what is known? What do we know what time the ship will arrive? What do we know about what time the ship left the upstream port? Or what time is arriving to the downstream port? How good are we uh, on that? Can we share that information? To be honest with you, if you see on the picture up there, there's a, something called PCS. That's a port community system. The port itself, just know exactly what's going on within its own community. Does that information relate to the ship? Not usually. There are some sectors which they have much better information about the port situational awareness, such as the cruise industry, which I know very well, and also the container industry. But when it comes to the rest of shipping, that information becomes cloudy and not even real time. It's very important to see on a web page, the time of arrival of the estimate time of arrival of a ship, but is that real time or is something that's been said a few months before or a few weeks before? Now, who has access to it? Obviously, whoever is in the port might have access if the port authority allow access to the port community system. Is it real time? We don't know that. And who has control of this situation awareness? Only the port. Now, is there a better way? In our opinion, yes, there is a better way. There is nothing wrong of sharing timestamps. We can look at somewhere a timestamp of about the actions we're doing. Those timestamps, of course, they're the property and they belong to the one who have put them in, so privacy is important. On the other hand, who has access to them? You can't have access to them if you're part of the specific port call and you're an interested party. Does that port call last forever? No, it lasts from the time the ship left one port and arrived to the other, and immediately leaving the last port to the next one, a new port call is in place, and the previous one does not exist. How do we do that for everybody to look at? Let's look at the airports. They do have poor collaborative data um, management. How do they do that? They have been, because of the way they work, they have created a closed system that everybody knows who everybody does and where they are. For example, the, the pilot have initiated uh, landing. Immediately, all the buses are informed about that, and they log in that they're ready. A few minutes later, they log in, they're on their way, and so on, and so on, and then everybody knows where everybody is at any time. And at the end, what do you achieve? I mean, you know I'm here. It's real lifetime story. So what? I achieve just in time. Why should you achieve just in time? I don't know. Think about it. The experts, although I rightly be, be, I, I agree with the, uh, the chief executive of Alibaba, the experts are for yesterday, they're not for tomorrow. We don't know what the future holds. 
but at least looking at historical data, you can predict up to a certain certainty what might be the norm of tomorrow. Therefore, just in time means no unnecessary movements, no unnecessary use of fuel, no unnecessary emissions of carbon dioxide as a minimum, not to go to SOX, as NOX and the rest of it. But anyway, what can, how can we achieve that? We can have the previous slide that we were looking on a poor community system and say we have a platform there, we're sharing information. Yeah, but it does not extend beyond the boundaries of the port. You need to continue the information to reach the oceans and from the oceans to reach the shore office. Therefore, we need an, op uh, an optimal data sharing platform which operates on universal standards if you require them, or as we have before, we might be open platform with no international standards and everybody can come in and then translate accordingly. But of course, you can understand you might have chaotic information coming back to the regulators, which eventually at the end of the day will like to evaluate this kind of situation. Uh, you need to have a safe and secure digital interaction, enhanced situational awareness, multiple sources, data input, it could be the ship, it could be the manager, it could be the owner, it could be the port, it could be the pilots, the agents, the stewards, and then you have global implementation. That doesn't mean one platform should be a monopoly. It could be different platforms connecting between themselves. It could be a number of, of poor community systems having their own common platform, sharing information to other platforms. It could be a compliant to the recommendations of the International Maritime Organization, and of course, adaptable, scalable, and at the future, to use the, um, all these kind of new buzzwords like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and blockchain. Without further ado, because I don't want to overrun my 12 minutes, why a data sharing platform? I think I said enough about that, but very quickly we can get access to external data in a standardized format. We can achieve connectivity for compliance. Only one connector needs to be built and we create a series of analytics from the anonymized aggregated data. Keep in mind, if we don't do it voluntarily and we take control, the IMO has already rolled the ball that supports and the ships and the flag states and the port states, they have to collaborate to bring just in time. So we're there. But I would like, I'm one of those that for my many years in regulation, I never accepted that the IMO should dictate the shipping industry. It should be the shipping industry go back to IMO and said, we have created this, now we need some standards or we need some regulation. Um, as Continua can provide simple discovery and connectivity, you can simply find a port and ask for information. You can ask for another Ship information is provided. You can enable instant data access from a carrier and other external actors. Allows easy connectivity to external actors of the platform and changes of the data format is not a problem. I'm not going to stay on this one because this presentation has been made for a, a, a longer uh, presentation, but what we can accrue as a benefit is the ultimate goal is to ensure performance comparison to overall shipping so you can benchmark yourself if you want. As a, as a first step, the terminal shipping company integration will happen, a further only will become more global. And as the time goes by, we're gonna see more ships and more ports who would like to join the collaborative platforms because they do see the, um, the benefits that could by that. Then you have port-to-port -port communication. Don't forget that now port-to-port -port communication is not, is happening directly, which is expensive and on the other hand might not be a direct connection to every port in the world. But through, through an exchange like a data sharing platform, you can get access to ports that you as a port might not really have connection before. Then you have, of course, the holistic added value through the logistic platforms. Uh, you have in the middle the data sharing platform. You've got the people that they are connected, the people which are not connected to the data sharing platform, but they go on and off. So therefore you create synergies and collaboration, but also you create uh, business intelligence. Um, don't forget that eventually by sharing platform, there is business, uh, by sharing uh, information, business intelligence can be created. That doesn't mean uh, it's to the detriment of someone, but you, um, you can use that information to evolve yourself as a company. Of course, you can create an analytics at the end of the day, and I think that's where the IMO is heading on now through the global 
uh, International Ally Industry Alliance and their port call optimization group. They try to create aggregate statistics to find out analytics and then propose way forward to optimize the fleet uh, and the port interaction. Uh, there are uh, more of things that I can go about, but I don't think we have to spend more time on that. We can have it on the discussion or you can see the presentation later on. Uh, what I want to make sure to understand is that please feel free to contact me anytime you like. We do have one of those data vision platforms, and thank you very much for the award you awarded us last night, and it's called Perseus. It belongs to Marine Fields, which is uh, another affiliate company of uh, Dodotheo Maritime, and we're very glad to give you any information. I've been approached lately saying, oh, this is a very good uh, technique, a very good platform, a very good tool for the um, container industry or the cruise industry. I believe for the cruise industry might not be interested because they have their own way of working with these things. To the container industry, definitely it is. Uh, but I don't believe it only stops to those two sectors. The rest of the sectors, as we go in approaching the 2030 and the 2050 goals of the IMO, we have to do as much as possible on the reduction of CO2 to achieve the 30 and the 50% reduction in aggregates. Thank you very much.